What's up Giant Slayers? In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about how to escape from bottom side control when outweighed by 75 pounds. If you guys wanna learn, then keep on watching. Okay guys, so here I am, bottom side control against Big Bill. He's about 230, I'm about 155. Um, he's doing a really good job trying to come up to a knee belly and getting past my knee shield right here. So I decided to use my inside arm. Instead of framing the hips, I decided to bring it low uh, to block that knee belly and get his knee back to the ground there. Uh, right here, he's looking for um, kind of a navy ride with his right hand, looking to point my knees in uh, the opposite direction away from him. I was trying to get my butterfly hooks right there. He was able to back step. Uh, so right here, guys, I'm really trying to be patient with my escape, not trying to force anything. Uh, the reality is against a big, strong guy uh, who outweighs you uh, significantly, you know, you're not going to be able to force your way out. You got to pick your spots, time your escape. Right here, he did a really good job uh, getting past my knee shield, driving his right knee to the ground while simultaneously attacking an Americana on my left arm. So he's kind of putting me in a, a dilemma right here. I either have to regain that quarter guard or half guard or uh, focus on saving my arm. So I decided to play defense right here. Uh, keeping my elbow above my shoulder line, keeping my elbow heavy, uh, sucking my elbow back down and in here uh, just to avoid the Americana and not get submitted. Uh, so my priority is always uh, staying safe, defense uh, before escapes. Uh, he did uh, manage to get a mount and then I was able to recover into a half guard. Uh, personally guys, it's my game. I, I'd rather actually escape the mount against a big guy and get back to a half guard versus trying to fight from side control. So sometimes I don't always mind if a big guy gets to the mount position. Uh, again, personally, I just find it a little bit easier for me to escape from uh, the mount than to do side control most times. But um, anyways, if it's competition, I wouldn't let that happen or try my best not to let that happen, obviously, due to the points. But anyways, here we are back in the side control. I'm looking to hide that outside arm. I was framing on his neck there, but as soon as he let go of his cross face, I was looking to duck that hand underneath his armpit. So you'll notice he's having a really hard time attacking my left hand now because uh, it's hiding underneath his left arm. Uh, right now, he's gonna look to cross face me right here. Uh, so again, I'm using my left arm underneath his armpit, keeping that arm safe. You'll notice right there, there's no Americana, there's no Kimura, okay? Freeze it right here. I was able to uh, time my escape. I sensed a little bit of an opening. His pressure laps just a little bit. I decided to do a quick uh, bridge shrimp and get my knee back in the pocket here. So I was able to get back to half guard. Um, today's video is about side control though, so uh, I was being a little laxed on my half guard, um, letting him get back to, uh, or excuse me, getting back to a close guard myself here, but letting him start back in side control because that's uh, what today's video is all about. So here we go, he has a cross face and an underhook. This time Bill uh, knew that I was looking at elbow escape and uh, he decided to baseball slide, kind of go into that case of position before he decided to step over to the mount. Uh, right here I was able to lock up uh, his ankle, secure a quarter guard. Um, looking to get back to a half guard there I go but Bill did a really good job again attacking both the lower body and the upper body at the same time so here I am uh, defending a Kimura against a guy who outweighs me he's really really strong so my mindset right here is keeping my hand low uh, this is the opposite from the Americana so I don't want my elbow line or excuse my my elbow going up to my shoulder line so I was trying to spider walk my hand off the mat right there uh, keep my hand low keep my elbow below my shoulder line and connect my hand to my body uh, if at all possible. Um, kind of a principle in jujitsu, once your elbows start to go away from your body, your arm becomes weaker. If you can keep your, your arms close to your body, your arms and your elbows are stronger. So uh, really trying to use my own body here. As an additional line of defense, I was able to uh, hook onto my, uh, kind of my knee pit area. Um, Bill is kind of high up right now on my forearm. Uh, for him to maximize leverage, he wants to slide down lower to my wrist, but uh, I was able to kind of avoid uh, the Kimura there, keep my, keeping my back flat on the mat and framing his inside hip. I knew he wanted to pull me up and kind of step over my head as well to finish that Kimura. So I was just trying to deconstruct everything he was looking to do. Uh, but right here again, I'm still stuck in bottom side control. Uh, usually my best opportunities to escape are when he's moving. So right there, I sensed another opening. He's able to get my knee back in the pocket. Uh, right there, I went from kind of a low knee shield up to a high knee shield and looking to uh, get back to a closed guard. So here I am. Uh, fishing that right leg um, into a close guard situation, but he was able to push it back down. Uh, Bill is really strong again, has great pressure, so this time I was able to get back to a close guard by utilizing my butterfly hook. So uh, there you have it, you guys. How to escape bottom side control against the guy who severely outweighs you. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.